Good evening. What's up everyone? My name is Augustine. I'm a musician and a massive fan of the Beatles. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the story of the day I saw Paul McCartney at Abbey Road Studios. Now, for this video, we have a very special guest and it's Sir Paul McCartney. We're gonna keep him here. There we go. Okay, um, so yeah, as I said before, I'm gonna tell you the story of the day I saw Paul McCartney at Abbey Road Studios. I wish I could say I met Paul McCartney at Abbey Road Studios, but I didn't really meet him. I didn't have the chance to talk to him or anything like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna stick to the truth and say I saw him <laughs> because I did see him. So it happened on the 29th of January 2019. At that time I was studying music production and sound engineering at the Abbey Road Institute. It was during a class in the morning. Um, I was listening to my teacher, um, kind of watching away as well. Like my teacher was there and I was very close to the mixing console. He was explaining something about the mixing console and you know, I was listening to him, but kind of watching away. Um, there was a tiny window because the studio that we used um, inside Abbey Road Studios, but for the Abbey Road Institute, um, it was kind of in the basement and there was a tiny window facing the main entrance of the studios. So as I said before, I was kind of listening to my teacher and watching away through the window. And all of a sudden I saw a black BMW going through the main gates and parking right in front of the main entrance at Abbey Road Studios, which is something that is not very common actually. Most people won't park their car right in front of the main entrance. I don't think many people can do that actually. And then I saw Paul McCartney getting off the car. He said hi to someone who was in the main entrance, um, you know, with the classic Paul smile, like, I don't know how to do it, but you know, if you love Paul McCartney, you probably know what I mean. And I was like, oh my God, that's Paul McCartney. I didn't say anything, but uh, it was like a fraction of a second, really. And one of my classmates, um, he saw Paul as well, the same moment that I saw him. And he said, Paul McCartney. And I was like, yes, so I'm not going crazy. It is Paul McCartney. And I was like, oh my God. So I literally went all pale and I had to take my jacket off as well because I nearly passed out. Like, I'm not even kidding. I almost passed out. The advice would be just relax. It's gonna be okay. And then just Paul walked into the studios and I was like, what? And then all my classmates were making fun of me because I nearly passed out. And I was like, well, I don't really care. You know, I, <laughs> this is insane. Um, because none of them were really like fans of the Beatles, um, even if they were studying music production at Abbey Road Studios, but you know, they were not necessarily like big fans of them. Um, except for one guy, uh, an American guy named David. Um, he was also a big fan and he freaked out as well. So my teacher explained to us that they were remastering the album Abbey Road in Studio 2, um, which is the studio where Beatles recorded most of their music. And Paul was there to have a listen before the new edition of the album got released. So Paul walked inside the studios and my teacher kept talking about the mixing console like nothing's happening. And I was like, wow, I cannot really focus right now because obviously my mind was somewhere else. So what I did, um, I went to the toilet three times, you know, just to see maybe I can get to see Paul or something. Um, but no, I didn't, I didn't actually see him. But I was pretty sure I was not gonna see Paul because he was working in Studio 2. So if he needed to use the toilet, he would have used the toilet next to Studio 2 and not the toilet that was close to our studio. But also when I was in the toilet, I was like, you know, if I saw Paul McCartney right now, it would be really, really awkward because, you know, you cannot shake someone's hand in the toilet. Not at all, definitely not. And you cannot even take a picture with someone in the toilet. Still very, very weird. And um, even talking to someone in the toilet is very creepy. And you know, when I released my video um, on this channel, visiting Paul McCartney's house, here in London. I got a lot of comments saying, you're very creepy, you shouldn't be stalking Paul, and things like that. Um, you know, I can see why I got these comments, but at the same time, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not that creepy, you know? It seems like I am, but I promise you guys, I'm not. So uh, I had these thoughts in my mind, and I was like, if I see Paul here in the toilet, I'm not gonna 
shake his hand. I'm not going to, probably I'm not going to even say anything, to be honest. But I was so sure I was not going to see Paul because, as I said before, he was probably going to use the other toilet next to Studio 2. Anyways, I did go to the toilet like three times just to see... I don't know. But also this guy named David, he went to the toilet like three times as well. And uh, every time one of us would come back from the toilet, we'd be like, uh, have you seen anything? No. Uh, have you seen anything? No, no. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it was creepy for sure. But come on guys. I mean, Paul McCartney is in the same building. Not even any building. We're talking about Abbey Road Studios and Paul McCartney is like next door. That's insane. I was in the Beatles. He was in the Beatles. Yeah. We are. So yeah, we were both freaking out but none of us saw Paul. But then when Paul left the studios, we actually saw him leave as well. So yeah, that time it was less of a shock, but still awesome. And also my teacher was not really cool with me and the other guy going mental, because I remember on the very first class at Abbey Road Studios, um, he said, one day you're gonna be using the studios and you're gonna see Paul McCartney. He literally said Paul McCartney. You're gonna see Paul McCartney or maybe your favorite artist they're at the main reception and you're gonna wanna talk to them but you're gonna have to keep it cool because this is a workplace and these people are paying a lot of money to be recording here so they don't wanna be bothered by students. And I was like, all right, I mean, fair enough. I can try, but if I see Paul McCartney, I don't know if I can really keep it cool, you know? And you know, one time I was having lunch um, with some other guys at the canteen and we saw Liam Gallagher and I was like, all right, this is a workplace. We're gonna keep it cool. <laughs> and I didn't say hi or anything. And he was very close to us actually, but it was not very hard because I'm actually not a big fan of Liam Gallagher at all. So it was like fine, still really cool to see these people, but I didn't have the need to say hi or anything like that. And also he's not the nicest person, so he probably wouldn't have liked it anyways. And then one day I saw Nile Rogers at the entrance of the studios and I said hi, and he was actually really cool. He was like, hey man, how you doing? And then he left. So yeah, I kind of broke the rules by saying hi to him, but technically not because I was outside the studios, so. So yeah, that's my only three experiences with like very famous people there at Abbey Road Studios. The rest, I met a lot of famous producers and sound engineers, but you know, not really famous artists like Paul McCartney or Liam Gallagher or Nile Rodgers. So yeah, that is just to explain that my teacher was not really cool with me going insane about Paul McCartney when he was in the building because you know, we were students and we have to keep it cool because they don't want to be bothered in the workplace, which is fair enough. So I did keep it cool. I didn't say anything. Um, I didn't stop Paul McCartney. I didn't get into Studio 2 or something. But yeah, even if I didn't have the chance to say hi to Paul or talk to him or shake his hand or have a picture with him, it was still awesome, you know, because I didn't expect to see him, obviously. And it really shocked me and it made me really, really happy. So I thought it'd be great to share this story with you because I know that a lot of you guys love the Beatles and maybe that's why you are subscribed to this channel. And if you're not, well, this is an invitation for you to actually subscribe to the channel because I love the Beatles and I always share content about my favorite band. So yeah, if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. You can also turn on the notifications bell so YouTube lets you know when I upload a new video. And that's pretty much it for now. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. As I said before, subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Instagram as well. And yeah, thank you so, so much for watching until the end. See you next time, bye. Quick note, you know, I didn't have the chance to talk to Paul that day, but if I did, I don't think I would have known what to say. So I'm actually very curious to see what would you guys say to Paul if you had the chance to talk to him. And also, if you have any stories like mine, you know, like um, if you met Paul McCartney or any of the Beatles and you want to let me know in the comments, that would be awesome because I love reading stories like that. Please let me know. Don't be shy. That's what the comment section is for. Um, well, I'm afraid that's just run out of time. Oh, I'm okay. really sorry. Oh, so much. Um, Bye, everyone. Thank you very thank much you. for your question. If I give my heart to you, I must be sure